Merry Christmas and welcome to Peninsula Bible Church's Christmas Eve services. My name is Paco. I'm one of the pastors here and I just want to say I am so thrilled and excited to be here with you worshiping the coming of our Lord and Savior today. Hey, one of the things that we have emphasized over the past few months and really throughout our history as PBC is though we've had this building, we've had this space for 60 plus years, it's never been about the building and it's never been about the space. It's been about a redeemed people, you and I, we are the church. And so wherever it is that you find yourself as you're participating in the service with us, we are there with you, the Lord is there with you, and we are worshiping Him together. And that is an amazing thing that we get to participate in today. And so as we continue our service, uh, make sure to take a picture and hashtag PVC meets here because the church is meeting right where you are and post it on our social medias uh, so that we can be mutually encouraged as we worship God together. And as the, the service continues, we want to prepare our hearts and our minds to, to remember the Lord and to worship Him with all of our hearts. Let's watch this quick video to prepare our hearts. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven.
Hi, we're the Sid family. I'm Daryl. I'm Carrie. I'm Cyrus. And I'm Eli. Um, 2020 has been um, a dark and difficult year for us. Um, when COVID hit, um, it really affected my business, which affected us financially. On top of that, um, the shelter in place and distance learning um, has been difficult for my boys. Um, just asking them to stare at a screen for hours each day um, has been difficult. I know they've been trying, but uh, to stay focused and to stay on track hasn't been easy. And on top of that, just being around each other 24 hours a day has led to a lot of friction. But um, even though this year has been dark, uh, God has been good. When we needed him the most, he came through and um, he's been the light of our year. 
Um, for me, the word that kept coming into my head this whole year was abide. And I kept going back to the verse uh, where Jesus says in John 15, 4, um, abide in me and I in you. Just as the branches cannot bear fruit without the vine, so we also cannot bear fruit without, without Christ. Um, so I, you know, I've held on to that verse and that's meant a lot to me just to remain in him and to trust that he is doing something. Um, and I guess that would be my prayer for our church body as well, just as a community that we would continue to remain in him, to abide, um, that we would encourage one another, that we would pray with one another, um, and just be able to love one another more like Christ, um, and, you know, in the year to come. Merry Christmas.
everything was ready. The moment God had been waiting for was here at last. God was coming to help his people, just as he had promised in the beginning. There was a young girl who was engaged to a man named Joseph. One morning, this girl was minding her own business when suddenly a great warrior of light appeared right there in her bedroom. He was Gabriel, and he was an angel, a special messenger from heaven. When she saw the tall, shining man standing there, Mary was frightened. You don't have to be scared, Gabriel said. God is very happy with you. Mary looked around to see if perhaps he was talking to someone else. Mary, Gabriel said. And he laughed with such gladness that Mary's eyes filled with sudden tears. Mary, you're going to have a baby, a little boy. You will call him Jesus. He is God's own son. He's the one. He's the rescuer. Wait, God was sending a baby to rescue the world? But it's too wonderful, Mary said, and felt her heart beating hard. How can it be true? Is anything too wonderful for God? Gabriel asked. So Mary trusted God more than what her eyes could see, and she believed. I am God's servant, she said. Whatever God says, I will do. Sure enough, it was just as the angel had said. Nine months later, Mary was almost ready to have her baby. Now Mary and Joseph had to take a long trip to Bethlehem, the town that King David was from. But when they reached the little town, they found that every room was full. Every bed was taken. Go away, the innkeepers told them. There isn't any place for you. Where would they stay? Soon, Mary's baby would come and they couldn't find anywhere except an old tumble down stable. So they stayed where the cows and the donkeys and the horses stayed. And there, in the stable amongst the chickens and the donkeys and the cows, in the quiet of the night, God gave the world his wonderful gift. The baby that would change the world was born, his baby son. Mary and Joseph wrapped him up to keep him warm. They made a soft bed of straw and used the animal's feeding trough as his cradle. They gazed in wonder at God's great gift, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Mary and Joseph name him Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us. Because of course, he had. That same night, in amongst the other stars, suddenly a bright new star appeared. All of the stars in the dark, vaulted heavens, this one shone the clearest. God put it there when his baby son was born to be like a spotlight shining on him, lighting up the darkness, showing people the way to him. You see, God was like a, a new daddy. He couldn't keep the good news to himself. He'd been waiting all these long years for this moment. And now he wanted to tell everyone. So he pulled out all the stops. He'd sent an angel to tell Mary the good news. He'd put a special star in the sky to show where his boy was. And now he was gonna send a big choir of angels to sing his happy song to the world. He's here! He's come! Go and see him, my little boy! That night, some shepherds were out in the open fields, warming themselves by a campfire, when suddenly the, the sheep darted. They were frightened by something. The olive trees rustled. What was that? The flapping of wings? They turned around, 
Standing in front of them was a huge warrior of light blazing into the darkness. Don't be afraid of me, the bright shining man said. I haven't come to hurt you. I've come to bring you happy news for everyone everywhere. Today, in David's town, in Bethlehem, God's son has been born. You can go see him. He's sleeping in a manger. Behind the angel, they saw a strange glowing cloud, except it wasn't a cloud. It was angels, troops and troops of angels armed with light. And they were singing a beautiful song, glory to God, to God be fame and honor and all our hoorays. Then, as quickly as they appeared, the angels left. The shepherds stamped out their fire and left their sheep and they raced down the grassy hill and through the gates of Bethlehem and down the narrow cobblestone streets, through a courtyard, down some steps, 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 past an inn, round a corner, through a hedge, until at last they reached a stable. They had heard about this promised child and now he was here, heaven's son, the maker of the stars, a baby sleeping in his mother's arms. This baby would be like that bright star shining in the sky that night, a light to light up the whole world, chasing away darkness, helping people to see. And the darker the night got, the brighter the star would shine. Far away in the east, three clever men saw the very same star the star that God had put in the sky when Jesus was born. They knew it was a sign. A baby king had been born. They had been waiting for this star and they knew that it would come. He's here, they shouted, he's here. At dawn, they packed up their camels and wrapped gifts for the baby. They brought their most precious treasures of all, frankincense, Gold and myrrh, special, sparkly, lovely smelling, gleaming things, just right for a king. The three wise men set off. They rode their camels across endless deserts, up steep, steep mountains, down into deep, deep valleys, through raging rivers, over grassy plains, until at last, they reached Jerusalem. They went to see King Herod. Surely he knew where this baby was, but he didn't. In fact, he didn't like the sound of a new king. It made him cross. He didn't want anyone to be king except him. But Herod's advisors told the three wise men what was written in their books, what God had said about the baby king. Go to Bethlehem, that's where you'll find him. Suddenly, the star they had seen in the east started moving again, showing them the way. So the three wise men followed the star out of the big city along the road into the town of Bethlehem. They followed the star through the streets of Bethlehem, out of the nice part of town through the not-so-nice part of town into the really not-so-nice-at-all part of town, down a little dirt track until it stopped right over a little house. Sure enough, in that little house there, sitting on his mother's knee, they found him, the baby king. The three men knelt before the little king. They took off their rich royal turbans and gleaming golden crowns. They bowed their noble heads to the ground and gave him their sparkling treasures. The journey that had begun so many centuries before had led three wise men here, to a little town, to a little house, to a little child, to the king. God had promised David all those years before. Though he was the prince of heaven, he had become poor. Though he was the mighty God, 
he had become a helpless baby. This child was a new kind of king. Lost and weary traveler Searching for the way to go Stranger, heavy hearted Longing for someone you know Merry Christmas. I hope that you are having a fantastic Christmas Eve. Thanks so much for joining us here at PBC for our Christmas Eve services. You know, one of our favorite family traditions around the holidays is to go out and find 
streets that are just lined with houses full of Christmas lights. Uh, that's one of the few things that this year we can do that's a sort of typical holiday tradition for our family. So we started off this year by doing this with Palo Alto Christmas. This is uh, five churches here in Palo Alto who've lit up the front of their campuses so that people could drive by and enjoy this Christmas light experience. As uh, we loaded up our kids in the car, who are two and four years old, as soon as we got in the car, we told them what we were going to do. They started calling out all of the Christmas lights that they were seeing everywhere. Oh, there's some Christmas lights, there's some Christmas lights, there's some Christmas lights all over the place. And I thought to myself, you know, maybe I should tell them that that's just the sign for a gas station. It's not really a, a Christmas light necessarily, but I thought, you know, they're having so much fun. Sure, 7-Eleven can be Christmas lights. You know, there's something about light that is just mesmerizing. There's something about a house full of Christmas lights that just brings you into the Christmas spirit in a way that not many other things can. Or the, uh, sitting around a, a campfire that's glowing and just watching those flames dance around like you could sit for hours. Or the fireworks and lights display at, at Disneyland. There's just something about light that draws us in. Now think back with me to that first Christmas. There was a group of shepherds that were sitting out in this field at night, just outside of Bethlehem, this small town outside of Jerusalem. And as these shepherds were sitting there in the dark, there's no light pollution back then, so I'm imagining it was dark. And in the middle of this darkness, an angel showed up, this bright, angelic figure. And this angel came with a message, announcing the birth of a savior. Shortly after, the, the sky fills up with all of these angels radiating the glory of God. I imagine the sky was just full of light. And as the angels announced the birth of this Savior, as the, the light from these angelic beings filled the sky, they pointed to an even greater light that was coming. We know this to be Jesus, the light of the world. At the beginning of the Gospel of John, he talks uh, about this light who was coming into the world. This is how the Gospel of John starts. It says, In the beginning was the Word. I want to stop right there. It's not even a full sentence, but I want to stop right there. In the beginning was the Word. Now, if you have uh, started reading the Bible from the beginning, the book of Genesis, these words are going to sound familiar. In the beginning. This is the way that the story of the Bible begins. Begins in the beginning, and what we read next is, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then as we, we learn about how God did this, the first thing we see is that God spoke and light began. God said, let there be light, and light broke into the darkness. There's a lot of different ways to describe God's work in the world. There's a lot of different ways to describe the Christmas story, but here's one. The Christmas story is the story of God bringing light to dark places. The story of God's work in the world is the story of God bringing light into dark places. Do you feel like you have some dark places in your life? Do you feel like you are in a dark place right now? If not, praise the Lord. We rejoice with you. And yet the reality is that for many of us, this year has been a dark year. There's been a darkness internally that we've experienced with mental illness and, and depress depression and discouragement and even spiritual warfare. There's been darkness that's, that's external as uh, this pandemic has uh, caused so much chaos in our lives and in our world. If you find yourself in a dark place, you need to hear the Christmas story today. You need to hear the story of God, and that's that God is about bringing light into dark places. This is how the world begins. But as we move forward just a couple chapters in Genesis, we see that this world that God has created and that he filled with, with light and life begins to be invaded by darkness. We meet a character named Satan in the form of, of a, a serpent. And he, he comes to Adam and Eve and he whispers lies into their ears, trying to get them to believe him instead of believe God. Trying to get them to do life their way 
instead of God's way. And Adam and Eve listen, and they choose their way above God's way. And in that moment, sin enters the world. And as sin enters the world, so too darkness enters the world. And that darkness begins to spread all throughout creation. And it's passed on from person to person and generation to generation, bringing greed and and, and anger and and lust and selfishness and all kinds of evil. In fact, all of the the evil that we see in our world today can be traced back to that first sin. All of the evil, both the, the moral evil that we see in ourselves and in our world, selfishness and anger, racism and violence and all of these things, as well as the natural evil that we see in our world. Things like a virus, things like death, right? all of this can be traced back to that first sin where darkness entered the world. But God wasn't content to leave his world in darkness. And so from those very first moments, God began working a plan to bring light once again to the world. And he does this in a person in a baby, the baby Jesus who's born on Christmas. As John continues, uh, he, he begins to talk about this light. Let me read again, starting in John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and nothing was made without him that was made. In him was life, And the life was the light of men, or the light of all humanity. As the angels appeared in that night sky to those shepherds, as they filled the sky with light, they brought an announcement about a baby who was born to bring light to the world. Let's think about light for a minute. What's, What's the purpose of light? What does it mean to say that Jesus is the light of the world? Well, light, fundamentally, it it helps us see. It helps us recognize what's true from what's false. It it, it guides us. It's a light onto our path. Light can bring warmth. Light brings hope. Think light at the end of a tunnel. But there's something even more fundamental about light than all of this. Light makes life possible. Without light, there, there can be no light. Without light, there can, there can be no life. There can be no growth, right? We can't make our way in the world without light. And so as this baby was born, this baby was full of life. Not, not, not just a, a normal human kind of life, but life that comes from God and was meant to be passed on to the whole world. It was in this baby, through this baby, that we too can have life. And this baby was also a light. He was the light of the world. He was the one who who helps us recognize what is true from what's false. He's the one who lights our path and shows us the way forward. He's the one who brings us hope. As John goes on, he, he continues talking about this light with this statement that's just stunning. In verse 5, he says this, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A few years ago, my brother-in-law, Zach, gave me a set of flashlights for Christmas. Actually, he, he gave me a spiralizer, but I already had a spiralizer, so he took that back and he gave me this pack of flashlights instead. I, I, I took that, that most powerful flashlight in this set, and I went out into the backyard, and I, I, I shined it in the backyard, and it just lit the whole thing up. And then I took it and I I shined it up into the night sky and it didn't make a difference, right? Because it's like the the, the darkness from the sky was just so much bigger, so much more powerful than this small flashlight that I was holding. But Jesus, as the light of the world, is more powerful than any darkness. There is no darkness that can cover up the light of Jesus. There's no sin that is too great for him. There's no evil that is too strong for him. There is nothing that can overcome the light that Jesus brings. So I wonder for you, 
Where are those places of darkness in your life? How have you been experiencing darkness this year? There's all kinds of ways that we've experienced darkness. There's, there's the sin in our own hearts. Maybe it's being confronted with your own anger or, or your own greed or, or your own lust or something in your own heart. And that can be scary and it can even feel hopeless at times. Like, what, what, what can we do with what we're, what we're seeing in our own hearts? But then there's all this kind of, of, of external darkness too. There, there's broken relationships. There's sickness and, and illness sometimes that leads to death. There's uh, conflict that we experience. There's political divisiveness. There's racism. All of these kinds of darkness that seem to be creeping in. And, and sometimes it feels like they're crowding out the light of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, the message for us today, though, is that there's no darkness that's too dark for Jesus. There's no darkness that he cannot overcome. No darkness inside of you, no darkness in our world that's too great for Jesus. As the light of the world, Jesus is the one who brings hope, even into situations that seem hopeless. He brings love into situations that are otherwise full of hate. He brings peace even into the most anxious types of situations. Jesus is the light of the world. And this Christmas, and every Christmas, as we look back to that first Christmas, we remember that God sent Jesus as a baby. Not just to stay as a baby, but to grow up and to, to live this life that was radiant. As people saw Jesus, there was something about him that just drew them in. There was something about him that was attractive, almost mesmerizing, as if it was this, this campfire that you could just stare at for hours. And Jesus grew up, and he lived a perfect life. He died a death on the cross as a substitute for you and for me. And now he, he passes that light to us, his people, so that we can go out and be the light of the world as well. And so I want to encourage you to find a candle in your home. Take, to take a candle. And uh, sometime in the next few minutes, I want to encourage you to light it. We're going to sing in, in just a moment uh, the song Silent Night. This is a wonderful Christmas tradition. Normally, we're, we're gathered here in this space together. And as we sing it, we light candles and we pass it from person to person as a symbol of the light of Jesus being passed to us and being passed from person to person. We're not gathered together in the same space this year, but still from our homes or from wherever you are, we can light our candles as we usually do. While we can't pass that from person to person and sing together and hear all of our voices, we are going to hear many different voices as we sing this song. This is the Bay Area Blessing Christmas version of, of Silent Night. Over 65 churches from the Bay Area, over 100 different voices gathered together to bring us back to that first Christmas where the light of the world was born as a baby. And to remind us that we too now are the lights of the world. And so let's enjoy this beautiful song together. Let's light our candles and let's sing together of Jesus, who is the light of the world and who was born on a baby that first silent night.
Wow, what an incredible and encouraging video we just watched. And what an incredible time it's been with you worshiping the coming of our Lord and Savior together. Hey, I want to remind you, we took a picture during the service to, to post that on social media, hashtag PBC Meets here, because again, we are the church and we have just spent an amazing time remembering the coming of our Lord and Savior. I want to encourage you to join us this weekend as we have our services, the 27th, and we'd love to see you there. We'd love to participate, have you participate with us as uh, we continue to worship the Lord together in this crazy season we find ourselves in. Uh, but until then, go in peace. <laughs>